Looks like not so many with us today. Perhaps they got. No, because I only just sent the link. Okay, so they were coming. Yeah. So I hope my the, um, the volume's okay and the microphone, it sounds better. Okay. Yes, perfect today. Very good. All right. Okay, so let's begin while others are coming. So we're on um, text 60. It's a chapter five. It's called The Beloved. It's an interesting title for the chapter. Very sweet. And um, now, if I remember correctly, we're hearing now um, the Pandavas are beginning to speak. Now the Pandavas are speaking up. And uh, actually, yeah, the Pandavas are speaking up. Is that right? The Pandavas are speaking up. Prikshit, yeah. Prikshit, yeah. Oh, this is Prikshit. This is who the um, Brihat Bhagavatam Rita is. He's the one who's reciting it to his mother. Yeah, so now, if I remember, um, Pandavas are now speaking up against their glorification from Narada Muni. And we've had hints of where Narada's going to be going next. And if I remember rightly, he's going to be going to Krishna's personal family, the Yadava clan, if I've got that right, in Dwarka. The Yadavas, yeah, Krishna's personal family members. So that's where we're going now, eventually. All right. So um, we can begin text 60. Um, yeah, perhaps I can have a read to begin, make a difference this time. There's, yeah. there's no hands up. So, um, so text 60. I like to chant the slokas if I can. I, I hope that's okay. Shri Prakshit Vacha Shaslokam Avadamatas Tato Mama Pitamaha Krishna Prana Sakasmi Shrimam Arjuna Nish Nevasan Moho Shri Prakshit said, Then, dear mother, my grandfather Sriman Arjuna, the intimate friend of Krishna, of Krishna dejectedly spoke. Sighing again and again. Commentary. Bhima was Krishna's Nama Shaka, the Lord's bosom friend. But Arjuna was Krishna's Prana Saka. That is, Krishna and Arjuna were dearer to one another than life. So Prana means uh, life, air, doesn't it? And um, life, air. Arjuna was glorious, Sriman, blessed by the goddess of fortune because of his intimate friendship with Krishna. It was painful for Arjuna to think about the friend he now rarely saw. Text 61. Shri Bhagavan Uvad, Shri Bhagavan Arjuna Uvacha, Bhavad Priyatamashena, Bhagavan Amona Kritaha, Kripa Paro Pitukaya, Kilish. Blessed Arjuna said, O oh godly Narad, the great mercy of your beloved Lord, supposedly bestowed upon us, has in fact become the cause of our sorrow. Commentary. Arjuna's relationship with Krishna is more intimate than Bhima's, whereas Bhima discounted Krishna's kindness as a mere pretense that served other aims of his pastimes. Arjuna had to acknowledge that Krishna's affection for the Pandavas was real. According to Arjuna, Krishna's intentions when he drove Arjuna's chariot and served the Pandavas in, in various ways were sincere. Yet somehow the results were usually contrary. So remember those um, interesting um, words, prayer on um, words of Bhima, he was kind of indicating that Krishna has many purposes to fulfill. Okay, he was acting, he was acting as our, you know, our messenger, he was acting, he's acting as our guide, but actually he's not just acting for our benefit. He is serving many, many purposes, and 
Even Bhima said that it's difficult to understand what is Krishna's actual purpose. <laughs> so this was Bhima's, um, in that sense, he's kind of discounting the uh, glorification that's coming to him and the Pandavas. But it's interesting the way that Bhima described it. Yeah. Krishna has many, many reasons. Like there's a verse also in the Bhagavatam which describes, it's kind of asking the question, why did Krishna appear on, on this earth? And ultimately it concludes with, so we can engage in hearing and chanting his glories. But it gives about six or seven other reasons why he comes. He comes to destroy the demons, comes to satisfy the goddess of fortune, etc., etc. So this is so now Arjuna's being Krishna's prana sucker is is more closer. You could say does he have a more yeah more intimate closer friendship than Bhima? So he's counting Bhima a little here, saying actually no, Krishna's was serving the Pandavas very sincerely. Yeah, so. So 60, oh, wrong way. One second, Hare Krishna. Okay. 62, 63. Perhaps I won't chant the Sanskrit because we started a bit late and we want to save a little bit of time. Plus, I'm not pronouncing it so correctly today. So let's just go to the translation. So swayed by dry speculation, concerned only only with their own dharma, Bhishma and others on the field of war fiercely attacked Lord Krishna, piercing his armor and flesh. Lord Krishna, the wielder of the Shuddhashan Chakra, tolerated for my sake those repeated attacks on his divine body. So I tried to stop him. Commentary. In text 62 through 70, Arjuna explains how Krishna's good intentions often brought the Pandavas to grief. During the 18 days of the Battle of Kurukshetra, even though Lord Krishna had promised to take up no weapons himself, warriors like Bhishma more than once attacked him. Because Krishna wanted Arjuna's, because Krishna wanted Arjuna victorious at all costs, Krishna never turned away from these attacks, but repeatedly exposed to the danger of injury his tender body, more precious to Arjuna than his own. Bhishma and the others who tried to harm Krishna justified themselves on the grounds that they were following the principles of righteous warfare. Pitri Adjo Bi Hantavya Shatriena Rangane Rang Ranagane. On the battlefield, a chatter should be ready to kill even his father or other relatives. But since Krishna is the aim of all true religious principles, the attacks on him were unrighteous. Arjuna says that the warriors who attacked Krishna did so because their understanding was dry and impersonal. They reason that since Krishna is the absolute truth, he cannot feel pain when pierced by weapons. So attacking him is not wrong. This means, Arjuna implies, that they were not pure devotees and had no real understanding of the sweet honey taste of Sri Krishna's lotus feet. So Arjuna here, he's got issues with those who are fighting against Krishna. And that, um, that includes Grandfather Bhishma. Um, and it seems like Arjuna is implying that, for instance, Grandfather Bhishma is not a pure devotee and others. And they had their reasons for attacking Krishna. And, it's, and, it's, and that's given here. Anyway, let's read on. The, the blows Krishna received in battle seemed to penetrate his skin and draw blood. The attacks were earnest and forceful enough to have been fatal for a human fighter. More likely, however, the so-called blood flowing from Krishna's transcendental body was actually perspiration, an ecstatic symptom of his compassion for his devotees. Krishna's purpose was to show the world how much concern he always feels for his devotees. Arjuna tried to dissuade Krishna from facing these challenges. He told Krishna, My Lord, since you promised not to join the fight, why, why are you advancing to kill Bhishma? 
Why are you accepting the blows of the Bhagadatta and of Bhagadatta and others while I am here to protect you? Speaking like this, Arjuna grabbed hold of Krishna's feet and tried to stop him from attacking Bhishma. Ultimately, Krishna's sweet will is supreme. He is Chakrapani, the wielder, the wielder of the Sudarshan disk. With his eternal weapon, he could have effortlessly warded off all attacks and killed all opponents whenever he wished. But he bore the blows of various enemies just to increase Arjuna's fame. Let's read a bit more. Even today, O Brahmana, as I remember these incidents, I cannot remove the arrow of grief from my heart. How then can I feel any happiness? Acts that bring pain to a dear one are not a sign of compassion or love. When I refuse to kill Bhishma, when, when I refuse to kill Bhishma, Drona and others, Krishna, the best of the wise scholars, taught me something to induce me to go ahead and, and kill them. Hearing only the literal meaning of what Krishna taught may please dry scholars, but to us whose life and soul lies in glorifying pure devotional service, those instructions by the Lord give great pain. So I presume that's Bhagavad Gita, is what Arjuna is speaking about here. Yeah. Commentary. The Upanishads convey the essence of Vedic knowledge, and Shema Bhagavad Gita conveys the essence of the Upanishads. Various exalted sages became the rishis or the receivers of rishis of each of the Upanishads. But Bhagavan Sri Krishna chose to speak his own Gita directly to his friend and devotee Arjuna. Because Arjuna is too humble to think himself great and is disappointed by Krishna's having left the Pandavas, he does not consider himself a favored devotee of Krishna. Therefore, he tries to deny the transcendental value of the Gita. This is only a ploy, however, to distract Narada. To distract Narada. Arjuna's argument here is not valid. In the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna teaches pure devotional service, and he chose to speak to it to Arjuna, because Arjuna is one of his purest devotees. Shavo Panishadoghavo Tokta Gopalanandanaha Pato Vatsa Sudhibhokta Dukam Gitam Britam Mahat. This Gita Upanishad, Bhagavad Gita, is the essence of all the Upanishads. It is just like a cow. And Lord Krishna, who is famous as a cow boy, is milking this cow. Arjuna is just like a calf. And learned scholars and pure devotees are to drink the nectarian milk of Bhagavad Gita, Gita Mahatmya 6. I think this is included in the beginning of the Bhagavad Gita here from the Gita Upanishad. So everyone follows here Arjuna's logic. Any questions or comments? Let me just see again, go back. I wanted to say something about this. Um, yes. Yeah, okay. All right, Mama Rajka Shah, you like to read on from 68? Okay, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Even carefully studying the purport of those instructions has not made me any happier. Rather, his words only make me remember how he deceived me. Commentary. According to all the Vaishnava commentators, including Sridhar Swami, Ramanujacharya, Madhavacharya, Jiva Goswami, Vishwanath Chakravati, and Baldev Vidya Bhushan. The purport of Bhagavad Gita is that Krishna is a supreme truth and that the perfection of life is to serve him with devotion. But in the ecstasy of separation, Arjun reads the purport otherwise. He thinks Krishna spoke these instructions just to trick him into agreeing to kill his teachers, Bhishma and Drona. Mm -hmm. Text 69 and 70. No one is dearer to me than Supreme Brahman, Krishna, with his all enchanting beautiful form. He has given himself to me who have complete faith in him. He is the reservoir of pure unconditional mercy, the holder of his word, the best of the well-wishing friends, the omnipotent 
Lord of all. <clears throat> Commentary. Here, Arjun admits his firm trust in Krishna. This solid faith is a reality underlying Arjun's ecstatic consciousness. His contrary expressions of apparent distrust are countercurrents of secondary ecstasies, which increase his pleasure, the pleasure of his beloved Lord and the pleasure of the Rasika devotees like Narad, to whom he divulges these feelings. In this verse, Arjun states four reasons for his complete trust in Krishna. First, Krishna is merciful unconditionally. Second, he, is always, he always fulfills his promises, such as the one he made to Arjun before the battle of Kurukshetra. Name Bhaktya Pranashyati, my devotee never perishes. Third, he is the most reliable friend and benefactor. And fourth, he is a supreme lord, able to do anything. Remembering these qualities of Krishna <clears throat> and his exquisite beauty of the intimate friendship he kindly shared, Arjun confesses that for him, Krishna is everything. But for this very reason, Arjun cannot bear to consider that Krishna would intentionally, intentionally deceive him into killing his teachers on the pretext of giving him spiritual instructions. Text 71 and 72. Sri Nakul and Sahadev said, yes, Sri Krishna gave us steadfastness in the face of many dangers. He arranged for the doom of all our enemies and for our success in the Aswamid and other sacrifices. He expanded our fame, kingdom, and pious credits, which others could hardly hope to attain. But, O oh godly Narada, we do not deem this evidence of his mercy. Text 73. Rather, he gave us his real mercy when, in the festival of many great sacrifices he has arranged, he delighted us by accepting the first worship. Text 74. Now he has cheated us by going away. So how can we continue to live? Before, O oh Brahmana, at least we had the sight of him so difficult to obtain. Commentary, like their brothers, Nakul and Sahdev judge Krishna, Krishna's mercy on them by whether or not he gives them his personal association. They could think themselves fortunate only as long as they could be with him and see him at the Rajasuya sacrifice and on other occasions. Yeah, this is a, this is a common um, point that's been brought up by other devotees as well. I think if I remember rightly, uh, Palab Maharaj brought this up as well. Okay, he appeared as the Lord appeared as Lord Nishringade, but where is he now? <laughs> And who else? Uh, not just Prahlad, who um, Hanuman as well. Did, did we hear about Hanuman? Yeah, we did hear about Hanuman. We did, yes. We did hear about Hanuman. He also it says the same, and also he's worshipping a deity of Lord Ram. Um, yeah, so it's a, and, and that's Krishna. He comes and he goes. <laughs> and even next, we're going to Dwarka, I think. We're going to Dwarka, and I'm sure that they're going to bring up a similar point as well. Krishna doesn't always stay in Dwarka. For here, well, here we're seeing that he took part in the Battle of Kurukshetra. Yeah, Krishna's always on tour. When he was present on earth, he was dispatching different demons. So and that's an ongoing theme, even, even in the... Even in Sorry? Higher planetary systems? Yeah, well, even in the spiritual world itself, then um, Krishna, for instance, then he he leaves Mavya Soda and he goes into the forest. Then, and then he leaves the cowherd girls. Then he comes back. So this is a constant theme, Krishna's. It's one book called Krishna Sangati that describes that Krishna's coming and going. So um, here, here, here it is. Again, um, yeah, all right. Okay. 
Yeah, I can read on 75. Text 75. Sri Parikshit said, hearing the words of the Pandavas, Draupadi was overwhelmed with sorrow. Calming herself with great effort, she spoke, crying in a choked voice. Text 76. Sri Krishna. Sri Krishna Draupadi said, so many times in my intimate friend, Sri Krishna saved me from the shame. And so many times he killed wicked rascals like the Kauravas. Text 77. I thought he would always show us mercy, but now my father, brother, and sons have all fallen in the battle. Mm. Text 78. Nonetheless, I don't lament, for by the nature, I accept whatever he may desire. But I had hoped that on one pretext or another, he would arrange for his desires to be fulfilled. Commentary. Duryodhan, Dushashan, and their friends had tormented Draupadi with their unspeakable wicked behavior. Draupadi knows that Krishna alone saved her and her husband from this abuse. Although her husband by their arms had killed their many enemies, it was Krishna's incon inconceivable potencies that had drawn the doomed warriors into patricial combat and Krishna's will that had sealed their fate. Even after Draupadi's father, Drupad, her brother, Drustadyuman, and her five mm -hmm. sons, headed by Prativindya, had all perished at, at Kurukshetra. She hoped against hope that Krishna would somehow make her happy again. Text 79. After my family members were killed, Sri Krishna personally sat here at my side and expertly consoled me with persuasive arguments. Text 80. I always drink the immortal nectar of those charming words so pleasing to the mind and the smiles that went with them. Commentary. With his sweet, compassionate words, Krishna had filled Draupadi's heart with new hope. Despite the material disaster and loss, Draupadi could be consoled by recalling how Krishna had sat and talked with her in concern and how attractive his words and smiling face had been. Okay, let's just pause there. It's just, so don't forget that um, Zora reading here. Um, actually, it's described, we just read that um, Draupadi, she sums. Um, she's actually crying here. She's really in anguish remembering Krishna. Um, and there's the, for anyone know that well-known verse, is it? No, that's, that's by Queen Kunti. This is Draupadi. Yeah, Queen Kunti prays because she also is lamenting that Krishna is going to leave after the battle of Kurukshetra. She, she says that famous prayer uh, that please let those calamities come again and again. Because whenever Krishna, whenever they would happen, then Krishna, just like here, he would just by his presence, all their anxiety which they went through would seem insignificant. Such was the nature of Krishna's personal association. So here she's describing that Krishna would sit, very charming, was, and pacify her. Now, like most of the, well, here, Draupadi and others, even the Pandavas themselves, would say from the point of view of uh, um, daughters and, and mothers, they actually went through lots of grief. So Draupadi, her father's Drupad, and her brother were killed, and her five sons also were killed. So she's quite emotional. But over and above that, she's she's acknowledging that krishna was able with his sweet words through his persuasive arguments to uh, to uh, console her so she just her father's been killed her brother's been killed and all her sons have been killed <laughs> but just by krishna sitting by her side very sweetly nicely giving her persuasive arguments has managed to, to console her and she's now remembering that. But now Krishna's not there. 
Yeah, so she's um, feeling great separation. Yeah. Any other comments or questions on this? It's good to remember, try and remember the mood that um, Draupadi is speaking here. I guess if it was a play, she'd be saying something like this. I always drink the immortal nectar of those charming words, so pleasing to the mind and smiles that went with them. <laughs> right. This is the mood she's in. She's not just um, reading it like a sloka. It's coming from her heart. She's... Um, Speaking, now she's speaking probably now. The moon is a bit embarrassed here now because now she's but, getting quite emotional. Muli Prabhu, yeah, is it uh, when actually he was in the battlefield when Bishop Pitama was on the throne that he was there and this is all, uh, all the brothers and the Dopati was there? Oh, what this conversation? One. Is that one or I'm getting oh, this, this, this is this is a conversation I think in the in a palace that Narada Muni has come and he's in the palace and he's glorifying the Pandavas, if I've understood your question. This is not yeah, I, yeah you did, yeah. That's right. Okay, not, yeah. Not on the battle. This is the battlefields, well, yeah, all the last rites are done. It took them I think it took them two months to do the last rites of the millions of troops, and things are settled down and they're in their palace and that's when Narada Muni comes, sometime after. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. I remember there's, there's another one, was when she was feeling so bad what uh, uh, Duryodhan is done, you know. So that's the time I thought I was, I was thinking of that, but it even as he yeah. just explained, yes. Yeah. Also, it brings up another thing as well, is that um, Krishna's appearance as well was... Um, it wasn't, as we said before, it wasn't a bed of roses for Krishna's uh, or for all the pious persons, for the Yadavas, etc. They, they, they was not, um, or the, the Pandavas or the Kodavas, even at that time, there was being, um, no, the Kamsa saying that a lot of them were banished. A lot of them were banished. Uh, who was it who? Kamsa, yeah, Kamsa had the, imprisoned his own father. Was is, mm. is that correct? So, yeah, he did. Yeah, Ugusena. So, so there was all hiding. There was all, you know, just like we now we read on the news, isn't it? Where, um, for instance, everyone in Ukraine, they all millions of people have to leave, you know, for fear of their yeah. lives. It's the same then. There was, um, what do they call it? Um, when someone goes to another country, it's called a um, exile. No, I didn't means they're what they called when people come from one other country. Asylum? Exile, but they're called... Um, Immigrants. Immigrants, yeah. Is that right? <laughs> that sounds like a negative connotation of a word, isn't it? <laughs> Immigrant. Yeah, so they were, they was hiding. And even, and for instance, when Krishna appeared, then Portuna killed thousands or hundreds of babies, newborn babies. You know, mm. she came to Krishna. So, and here we, we're seeing actually then the whole tragic episode of um, they're losing their kingdom and being banished to the forest. And you know, so this is the um, this is the background of uh, Krishna's appearance. You know, um, guys got a nice name, refugees. Refugees. That's the word I was looking for. That sounds better than immigrants. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well. Better connotation. All right. Thinking in that, in what you were talking, I was thinking about how Krishna is a sweet talker. Uh, today I was listening to 64 qualities of Krishna. How are Hindi class. There's a Hindi class of Nikya Seven. Oh, it's amazing. In one class, he tells the whole 64 um, qualities of oh, Krishna yeah. with little examples. I, I, I was just reading that today and I've got it on slides. Uh, I think we did it together, Nectar Devotion. I, I was reading that today, and I was thinking to put it on a, like a little video with pictures so you can watch it. Yeah, this it's really nice. Like I listened yesterday, today, just, and then tomorrow I'll listen as well, just to recap, and how Krishna is a sweet cooker. So Balram, when yeah. there's a, a little argument, Balram just says, Krishna, you just sit there and don't say a word. And then I, when they're talking for a little while, then Balram says to Krishna, why aren't you talking? And he says, but you told me not to talk. 
it's really it's, it's given really, if i remember rightly um that um the time when, um krishna was speaking very sweetly to nanda maharaj um, yeah. persuading him not to worship indra yeah. And one of the uh, residents stated that was describing that was watching one of the mothers it was just like Krishna was pouring nectar into our ears. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, so Draupadi is remembering Krishna's association and how she and how he pacified her. But now he's gone. So now she's lamenting. Yeah. How can you say he's given me mercy? He's gone. Where is he now? You know, so all right, let's read a bit. Let's so read. we are all sad not having Krishna Prema, but this the ones who already got Krishna Prema, they're also sad because Krishna is not with them. Yeah, and that's the nature of love. That's the nature of prema. There's this sambanda and there's this um ripalamba and some and some boga. Meeting and separation. As um, Gorgavinamaraj famously would say, like these are two banks of a river which prema flows. You've got meeting and separation, the two banks, and in the middle flows the river of prema. Because it helps, you can, you can understand how it helps to churn the attachment. Separation helps to churn the loving sentiment. And the attachment to Krishna, as you know, is so. So, so, so it has to be there. But what if we don't want separation? Well, that means, well, that's good. That means you're feeling separation. <laughs> yeah. But Murli Prabhu, they, I mean, you know. doesn't want to feel it. So that means she's feeling it. So that means you're lamenting. And that's, that's, and that's what we should lament for. Yeah. So this is Priya But they're lucky they had that. Uh, association with uh, Krishna and now they're thinking about it but for us we haven't even had that yeah so we are lamenting more you know yeah. we are really hungry for it yeah there's also a word I forget but there's a word for um, feeling separation from Krishna although one may have not contacted him yeah and a wonderful example of that, which is relevant to us, is Queen Rukmini's prayers. She, she, she has never had Krishna's association. She just heard about Krishna. Mm. I think Narada would explain. She would, she would hear about Krishna, hear about his beauty, hear about his qualities, hear about his pastimes. And she developed such a strong, loving attachment for him. So I think my Gurmaj mentions, yeah, her prayers are really relevant to us. I think it's mm -hmm. Purvarag, as it's called Purvarag, is where you're feeling separation from the lover as though you've never met yet, you know? Yes. So that's also, so that's also a, a bona fide feeling in our spiritual development, Purvarag. Yeah, we've never met Krishna. No, Gaya is saying that we were there and we separated so Sorry? Gaya is saying that we had it and then we lost yeah, that's it. another uh, you could bring that up as well and then egg more <laughs> like deeper into it going deeper into the subject then apparently according you know no, no, going going back to Godhead that's a good point that guys brought up but as far as our remembrance we cannot remember the details of yet um, as yet or we cannot remember the details of that relationship with Krishna, unlike Draupadi. She can remember, she can remember his beautiful face, she can remember his beautiful speaking and his beautiful smiling. She actually experienced it in this very life. You can imagine it, what, yeah, once how much separation they're feeling, then Krishna goes, he just leaves to perform his pastimes. So Dropin is bringing this up. Okay, he did this, he did that, yes. And the other Pandavas are bringing it up there. Yeah, but he's gone. Mm -hmm. so, so what mercy do we have? <laughs> exactly, yeah. Yeah. All right, should we read a little bit more? Let's read some more. Huh? Same thing that we go to the temple, we do service, we see him, 
and then we come home and then we miss him you know yeah it's nice i mean that's the one that's the beauty of deity worship krishna actually manifests he does manifest in his personal form and we get to be with him and then we're not with him like i was with radha krishna this morning i was dressing them now i'm not krishna is not merciful wisdom <laughs> You'll have his sweet dreams, Muli Prabhu. Yeah. Tomorrow I'll be dressing, so I get to see him again. Yeah. So it's nice to develop this, um, you could say, a nice spiritual sentiment, you know, when we're coming and going from the temple, you know, we, we should feel that like we should feel happy to be coming again in front of the Lord. And I get to see that as a Bajari when I'm on the altar. I get to see when I'm doing deity greeting. I often have a, you know, I, I, I also like to look at the devotees looking at Krishna. And it's really, it's quite inspiring, actually, because you, you're, you're there standing next to Krishna and you're seeing them all looking in such a, some people looking like, um, looking with such love and such, they can sell, they're looking through the eyes of wanting shelter. You know, they're looking at Krishna with such eyes of devotion. You must get pleasure, Muli Prabhu, huh? seeing them. You must get pleasure, you said, seeing yeah. them, how the devotees are interacting with, with the Lord. You know? Yeah, and one time I had an interesting experience. I was um, taking photos of the Lordships. And this was before the curtains opened. I was taking photos of the Lordships for something, for some project. And then um, the curtains opened. Then I blew the conch and the curtains opened. And uh, I saw the and the dual devotees bowed down, and then I took pictures before I started did de the greeting. What is bow? I, I I took pictures of all the devotees bowing down, <laughs> and I got I, I was overwhelmed with feeling as if as Krishna was saying, "Yes, these are these these are the photos you should be taking." <laughs> oh, that's so nice. Krishna was really appreciating his his devotees bowing down. And he was, he was, it was as if Krishna preferred those pictures. Why are you taking pictures of me? You should be taking pictures of them. Look, you know, look how surrendered they are. Yeah, they're suffocating. Nice. Yeah. Like in the, when you open the curtain and then everybody's going flat, you see. Saffron, <laughs> right. you know, there's no space. They're trying to put their head here and checking their legs are not touching. And it really isn't. Nice to see that. Yeah. You know? Okay, it's beautiful because everybody wants to see how beautiful the Lordship lo looks. So yeah. beautiful, you know, amazing. Yeah. So it's very nice, you know, when we got D degrees and the curtains open. It's supposed to invoke these feelings of um, meeting Krishna. Yeah. That's the idea. We're seeing Krishna. You know, in the beginning, when I used to like DT greetings, you stand there. And everybody's like really like looking. I used to think, what are they looking? You know, okay, I'm taking darshan. That's it. Okay, I've taken darshan. That's it. It's not feeling. There's nothing. Okay, there's Krishna. There's Radha. Jagannath. Well, there's Subhadra. You know, in early days, you don't know what you're really looking. You know. Yeah, I mean, sometimes you know, because sometimes perhaps more that will be more the daily experience at our stage, but. Sometimes we get inspired, and when we're taking darshan, we can feel quite emotional. Um, yeah. That's Krishna's grace, you know? Yeah, sometimes, yeah. 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 So, everybody's feeling quite emotional here. Yeah. He kind of shows different colors of different smiles, or he's looking differently, or something yeah. like that. But should we read a little bit more of Draupadi's anguish? Uh, who was reading, or someone else would like to read? Uh, Chandravali Mahal. was reading. Do you want me to continue? or yeah, No, no, you can read. Okay, carry on. Sure. Okay. Even so, it is my misfortune that he no longer comes here. So how dear, how dear sage, can I think he has shown me any mercy? Text 82. Sri Parikshit said, Mother Kunti, for whom the sight of Krishna was life seemed tormented with sorrow, remembering how Krishna had at times shown his mercy and at other times not. She then spoke pitifully with tears in her eyes. Commentary, like her sons and their wife, Kunti is a transcendental soul 
blessed with full mercy of Krishna. This is the truth, no matter what she says. Ecstasy of separation, vipralamba bhav, impelled her to complain sorrowfully as if an ordinary woman. Parikshit Maharaj qualifies his description here by saying, so karta eva, as if lamenting to help clarify the real situation. Text 83. Sri Pratha Kunti said, I had no husband to protect me, but Krishna always interced interceded just in time to save me and my sons from calamity. From this, I understood that Krishna's mercy on me was special, greater even than his mercy on his mother Devaki. Commentary, Queen Kunti in her famous prayers to Krishna compares her relation with Krishna to, Dwar, uh, to Devakis. O Harikesh, master of the senses and lord of the lords, you have released me and my children and your mother Devaki, who was long imprisoned and distressed by the envious king Kamsa from a series of constant dangers. My dear Krishna, you, your lordship has protected us from a poisoned cake, from a great fire, from cannibals, from the vicious assembly, from suffering during our exile in the forest, and from battle which great generals fought. And now you have saved us from the weapon of Aswatthama. Bhagavatam 1, 8, 23 and 24. Srimati Kunti here implies that Krishna's mercy on her differs from his mercy on Devaki. Krishna saved Devaki from Kansa's persecution, but only after Devaki had been imprisoned for a long time. Moreover, he released Devaki only once, and even when freed, she was still unhappy because Krishna had not rescued the first six of her sons from the murder of murder by Kamsa. But Krishna saved Kunti repeatedly together with her sons. Krishna always came to their rescue without delay. When Duryodhan tried to feed Bhim a poisoned cake, when Duryodhan tried to burn the Pandavas alive in the palace made of luck, when the brothers had to face man-eating Rakshasar like Hidamba, when they were cheated by the Kauravas in gambling and on numerous other occasions, Devaki had protectors other than Krishna, including her husband and other Vrishni heroes. Whereas for Kunti, Krishna was the only shelter. Kunti therefore considered her own dependence on Krishna more complete. Okay, let's just... Um, so it is a comparison now being made between Kunti and Devaki. So it seems like um, for Kunti is seeing her, yeah, comparing herself to Mother Devaki. Um, she's, Krishna is interceded before or in, in a different way than he has with Mother Devaki. For instance, she was imprisoned and her children were killed. You know, like the, but um, she's appreciating Krishna's mercy for her and her sons. This is right, isn't it? Yeah, I'm just reading it, into it here. Any comments about this? So this is clear. So she's appreciating more. Oh, Krishna was so kind to me. My income. He was kind to Devaki, but but in a different way. But I think not kind, not uh, kind as uh, Kunti. He was very much with her all the time. So that's what she's appreciating. He's just, she's saying that his mercy so much. Yeah, on that's, it, yeah that's, that, that's it. Yeah, yeah. And it's described here. Um, Krishna came w without delay. So she's yeah. with the Pandavas. Yeah. He was there all the time. Any Anytime she wanted him, he was there. But David Key, her experience was a little bit different. Different, yeah. Definitely, yeah. Because these these devotees will play different roles in Krishna's pastime. So that's the role that Devaki had to play. Mm. She had to play that role. 
of her sons being killed and being imprisoned. This ought to facilitate Krishna's appearance. And Krishna's, okay. yeah. well, after all, she she gave uh, um, she gave uh, birth to Krishna, isn't it? But yeah, yeah, that's right. Birth, quote unquote, not an ordinary birth, but it's from David Key's womb that Krishna manifest. Mm. So that was definitely mercy, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> but she was imprisoned. So anyway, so you can see Kunti here is getting quite a bit. She's getting emotional and she's comparing herself. How how kind Krishna is. She's probably saying this with tears coming down her cheeks. You know. Yeah. Appreciating so and much. He saved me so much. He saved my spima and Rakshashas. Krishna saved us again in the gambling match. Krishna saved us again. Yeah, she's appreciating Krishna very much. I'm thinking the same way, like, you know, okay, these are uh, Krishna's devotees, but like for us um, at a lower level, we also feel all these things, don't we, in a minute way. Like when things go happen in your life, you say, oh, look at that Krishna. Sometimes you want to like cry the way he's come into your life to do things, you know? You really yeah. are. That's, so, why it's, it is, that's why it's good to reflect on um, <clears throat> not what, it's good to reflect on not what Krishna is not doing, but what Krishna has done. Yeah. <laughs> Often we can, on Krishna's, we can be complaining of what Krishna is not doing, but actually let's try and reflect on what Krishna is doing. And like in I, an example today, like I have to, I had to get car service, MOT and everything, and I'm thinking, oh, where am I going to find a garage? What am I going to do? Whatever. I just went next door behind me, you know, that garage, please. I asked him, oh, he said, oh give me your keys. I'll leave it where it is and I'll pick it up and picked it up, did it, put it back in the space, and I had to just go back and just pay a fraction of the money that I would normally pay to take it to me. <laughs> you, know, you just think, how Krishna arranges everything? I went and gave him Mahapashad. <laughs> I take Mahapashad from the temple, I store it in the fridge, and I just distribute like that. And it just shows. But, uh, yeah, it shows. But Murli, as, Murli Prabhu as well, I think, when uh, we are remembering him, you know, like we're trying so hard constant with you know just our during our uh, in during our day routine yeah. and i think we just uh, as as the time goes by we appreciate him so much so much that you know thank you that you made us to remember you you know which that's what we want end of the day you know whatever we do we just want to remember him constant all the time day or night you just want to chant and just want to listen to him, glorify him constant all the time. Yeah, that's a nice prayer. And that's a prayer that's often comes up in the Shema Bhagavatam where devotees will pray. I mean, they get offered, they may be in a position where they're offered so many material benedictions or so many material assets, but but all they yeah. want is to be able to remember Krishna. That's that's, yeah. This is the... Um, this is a pure devotion, a pure, a pure devotional sentiment. All we want is to be able to think of Krishna. Exactly, yeah. That's so, that's good. so it is sometimes we get put into difficulty, just like Queen Kunti and Devaki. Uh -huh. But they're, they're taking part there. They're facilitating Krishna's leela and pastimes. But yes, sorry. I was going to ask you, like last night, I couldn't sleep at all because I was thinking um, so many things like, um, how can I go to the temple? Shall I take the car, leave the car, uh -huh. come back, do this, you know? Shall I get somebody to take me? Oh, I'll miss a bit, I'll do this. And then you're just lamenting, lamenting. So you're like thinking, which is the best way to do things? And, you know, so is that like Krishna conscious or are you doing it for yourself? Like, you think? Well, I mean, like this is life. I mean, we've uh, um, we've all got to deal with the details of the day, and there's so many complications that can happen. This is the world we're living in. So yeah, so it's it, it's good. It causes us to think of how to plan our day, how we can get to the temple. Yeah, it's all Krishna conscious, but ultimately, you could say these are just um, not superficial. In one sense, not that was not the right word, but there is a deeper way that Krishna is um, 
helping us and facilitating us. And that's he's bringing us to the point of love. Yeah. So existential, he's going to be arranging some quite some life, some more quite life challenges. Okay. It's, okay, it's Krishna's grace that, you know, that you can find your car keys. <laughs> oh, <there. laughs> Krishna's mercy for sure. But there's deeper things that Krishna's doing in our life to actually um, make him more dependent upon us. Up, 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 mm. Upon him. Upon him. Yeah. There's mm. more. Um, yeah. So those things take a bit of digesting and a bit of contemplative thought to actually be understand. It is Krishna's grace, you know. Yeah. Let me just check the time. Oh. I think that he should test you too much. When you've gone to certain states, then it should just okay, right? You qualified, go in. Oh, no, I, I think I think what we should do is sixty-five. That <laughs> you know, you've you know, done your bit. Now you're coming back to God. Yeah, okay, you've done twenty-seven <laughs> years. Okay, you're really right, come in now. Yeah, but you know, <laughs> don't be surprised if uh, if if we if there's a lot more things we have to go through. I know. Definitely, yeah, yeah. That's and, uh, what I'm scared. Which, you know, I'm just sort of saying, do you think that you know more, you know, will be able to take all that pain? Because well, obviously, we uh, go through that. I mean, who's to say? Let's just picture the devotees in Ukraine, for instance. Yeah. Such a wonderful yatra, Rafi yatras every year, full of color and festivity, and so many devotees, so many congregation members families living in what then all of a sudden the carpets pulled from under their feet you know and no even they have to leave their own home so who's to know where in a you know this is material world who's to know what what's in store but whatever is in store hopefully we're going to see the krishna we're going to see krishna in it like there's one book i think um mother's not with us today but there's one book that uh nirandana swami is writing I think we mentioned last time as well the experience of the Ukrainian devotees in these times of um, of complete um, turnaround in their lives, appreciating Krishna. Anyway, so yeah, so Krishna is helping us to park the car and things like that. But he will help us in other ways as well. He's done all of that. Now he needs to open the gate and let us through. That's it. Simple as that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we it was simple. Chandravali it is one. Uh, yeah. He's naughty boy. He's he's not he's not yeah, easy perhaps, to get him. Perhaps those gates will open, but you know, who to know what we've but we should be we should want we should have faith. Yeah, let let me Krishna, whatever you arrange, let me try and think of you. Let me try and think of how I can serve. Yeah. Mm. All right. All right, so let's but you must feel sorry for us anyway. Yeah, it's gone seven, so I've got a few things to do. Get ready for tomorrow. Um, yeah, anyway, some of you might be there tomorrow. I'm sure you'll be tuning in online. You'll be going to the manor online, going to so online, checking out where's the best bhajans, where's the best lecture. <laughs> Maybe checking it out. Planes running, is the tube running? Yeah. <laughs> They're not running, so that's that. Well, just in case they change their mind and they don't. Nicole, um, you, yeah, you never know. You never know. All right. Anyway, I wish you all a good day for tomorrow. I wish you a wonderful Jamastami. Hopefully, Thank you so much. I might see you on Prabhupada's disappearance day. Then uh, appearance day. Sorry. Yeah. Um, Which chapter are we on? Eighty-four. Okay. Eighty-four. Okay. So thank you, everyone. Wonderful reading and wonderful discussion. Yeah. His grace, Muli Prabhu ki. Yeah, thank you, Muli Prabhu, for wonderful class. Yes, Chakrapasa Hindu. Have a wonderful Jan and Matsumi, everyone. Yeah. Kripa Sindhu, everyone. Patita Nampava, Navyovation, everyone. Second, I can't. Hare Krishna, everyone. Yeah. I can't turn it off yet. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I found the end button. Hare Krishna, everyone. Hare Krishna. Krishna Jamastamiki Jai Hare Krishna 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 Hare Krish